Mates, it's the end of May, beginning, well, almost into June. It's the last week that river fishing is allowed in fly fishing. We arrived at Maritzburg. We're going to shoot down to the Midlands, just past Nottingham Road. I'm not exactly sure where we're going, and that's why we're relying on Jan from the Kingfisher Maritzburg. We're stopping here. He's going to kit us out. I've never really done river fishing for trout, only really the dams, the controlled environments. So the river is something new, very excited. And who better to go with than Jan? Um, any, everyone who knows Jan here in Maritzburg, from a fly fishing perspective, the best advice you can get. Um, so if you're in the area and that's something you want to look into is a bit of fly fishing, Jan is the right person to speak to at Kingfish and Peter Maritzburg. Let's go meet Jan. This is Jan, you guys have met him before. Uh, so yeah, yeah, quite excited. I was just telling our audience that this is my first full river fishing. Okay, now, totally unprepared, so I need to get some clothes. Kingfisher makes this nice quick dry material pants. Uh, just grab some water, water boots. Guys, we head out to Nottingham Road so long, Jan is following and he'll meet us here. Now whenever you come to this area, it will be a total sin if you don't pop in at the beer fossil. Famous all over. For anyone who's been to the Midlands or came to Nottingham, really full of character. Referred to as a delicatessen, but they serve the best food and craft beer and everything. All the guys meet here normally in the evenings and we've had some really great times here. So make sure you pop in at the beer fossil. Um, we've got a couple of uh, minutes or maybe an hour to kill until uh, Jan joins us again. Speak of the devil. <laughs> and he arrives. Craft beer? Indeed. What they're famous for? Exactly. Yeah. I know. Welcome to Nottingham Road. Yeah, they were one of the first places with Zulu Blonde, if I remember. Um, yeah, one of the first the places. The first one was, was Mitchell's and then I think if memory serves, one of the one of the one of Lex's brewers actually came up to the Midlands and he started started Nottingham Road Brewery. So that my goodness, that was like middle 80s. This was, I think, the second second craft brewery in South Africa. There we go. One of the reasons people come here. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thanks for taking us. one or two of these flies for us uh, for tomorrow and uh, obviously how many years did you say you've been fishing this river? I've been fishing up there 11 years. 11 years. 11 years. So by now he knows what works, he knows his bugs and he can't be bugged about any other bugs. not the exact start of the morning but this is the start of the fishing the morning started with an absolute fantastic breakfast at Loxley house now Jan has given us an in-depth explanation on the area we're standing here on the Moy River with crystal clear water brown trout country Jan this is any fly fisherman's dream if you look at this from a wild trout and brown trout point of view it's fantastic water so we're basically at the top end of the Camberg Valley at the moment so the Moy is one of two premier brown trout streams that we've got in the country. So we're just driving through this area at the moment. We're on our way to the Bushman's River. But yeah, I mean, the water is absolutely fantastic. A little bit low as we expect coming into winter at the moment, but perfect conditions. And we're looking forward to a fantastic fishing day just now on the Bushman's. I must tell you, I'm, I'm like a little child again, because I haven't done this type of fishing ever. The river fishing, this uh, purest uh, dry fly fishing. I'm looking forward to that so much this morning and I can't wait to see you in action and pick up some tips and tricks. It's gonna be a great day. It's fantastic, weather's looking great. So yeah, we look forward to it. Okay, so now I popped the flies that we tied last night into my box, so we have to start with one of those that we tied last night. We're just basically adding some tippet onto the end of the 4X tapered leader. And the one we actually tied last night, which there he is. 
Are we ready to go fishing? Let's go to the Bushmans. Now, I'm a bit overexcited, so I started walking ahead. But this is what it's all about. The whole experience from yesterday, coming through and now for that final, may I say, climax, which we're going to reach right now here in the valley, in the Bushman's Valley. Uh, probably at the top of any fly fisherman's list is fishing for brown trout, wild trout, in a natural environment like this, in the beautiful surrounding of the giant castle reserve. And Jan, thanks for sharing this experience with us and with the audience. I mean, this is really special. This is something in all the years I've been fishing, 40 years, that I haven't done and really wanted to do. It was on my list. So thank you for bringing us here. It's really, really a privilege to be here. Well, absolute pleasure to have you guys here. It's it's possibly one of my favorite spots in the in the planet here at the moment in terms of the wild, wild uh, brown trout fishing. So yeah, welcome. Let's go fishing. We'll start there. It's looking a little bit low, but we'll have a look there. That's quite a nice dry fly section just to start with there. And then underneath the bridge pool is also, it's very nice over there. And then we've got dry fly water all the way up to the top end of the reserve. You've got some nice depressions in the water, so that's where your fish will be in those in those deeper depressions. And I try and tell guys that I bring here to fish is you need to look for those slightly little deeper channels for those depressions. That's where your fish will be, uh, rather than in the very shallow water. It is getting towards the tail end of the season, and obviously fish will be moving into spawning mode. So you will find them also in slightly shallower water than normal. But generally, those slightly deeper depressions and the little valleys inside the riverbed is where you want to aim. For your, for your fishing primarily. And essentially all we're doing is we're just casting upstream and let the dry fly drop down with a natural drift as possible, just following the flow, the flow of the river. gentlemen is a Bushman's River trout on the fly we tied last night. Check that fly. Keep them wet. Six cast guys, how's that? Flat out spawn mode this one eh? Thanks dude, can I have my fly back? Off you go. Happy days. That's why we can't sight cast for fish here. When you see them on their side they're so silvery and golden on the belly and think how can you not see a fish like that but you put him down on the bottom that tail fin leaves your hand and you cannot see that fish they're so well camouflaged on this on this bottom here once you've taken a taken a fish on a dry fly it's it can be wet and it can be slimed on so what you want to do is you want to dry the fly so basically i just use a bit of a bit of paper towel squeeze the squeeze as much moisture out of the fly as possible and then we have a desiccant just to take out the last bit of moisture drop it into into the shake and bake as we call it and the fly is ready to go okay so targeting all these like slightly deeper spots essentially what you want to do generally there's one fish in a good lie in each of the lies so once you've taken the fish out of there, you take a couple of steps up, just constantly moving upstream slowly, targeting the slightly deeper water. You just got to target the likely looking spots here on the Bushmans here. It's, I mean, I've generally four or five casts, just quartering the stream, covering covering the width of the river, and and paying slightly more attention to the deeper deeper sections because that's where your fish will be. Outside, it's 18. We're fishing close at hand eh, for maximum control. So you want maximum control of the fly. Generally what I recommend is about, about a rod length of fly line out. So we use a rod length of fly line out just to turn over the fly. Uh, turn over the leader that is and the fly. And then you have a and then you have about a 10, 11, maybe 12 foot leader. 7 foot 6 rod. And uh, 10, 11, 12 foot, maybe 20 feet in front of you where you're fishing maximum. That's all you need. Ooh, nine. Yeah, I tell guys, don't be tempted. If you see a fish rising at the head of the pool, don't be tempted to, to try and throw a very long cast from where you are. Just work your way up through the pool. You'll be surprised that you might catch a couple of fish before you even get to that fish. You see how easy that pink, pink side there is to see?
So the kind of water that we're looking for is that rocky, rocky rubble substrate of the water. That's where the fish find their best homes. This smooth water is not what we're looking for. There's no, there's no protection for the fish. The, those rocks and the structure underneath, they afford the fish some protection from the current, from the moving current. So they sit either in front or behind the boulders on the stream bed. Um, and best closest to the main seam of the current where the food conveyor belt is. So we generally avoid these sections, skip, so we'll cross the bridge, we'll go around to the next rocky area which is around the bend. So just a single, single back cast really, and then just keep the keep the keep the length of the line wide. So just back cast, and up, and the perfect drop like that exactly. And then as the as the fly is coming towards you, just slowly lift the rod just to keep tension so you can keep the line up. So you see, see what I call about the palm off. So those are the palm off. So basically this, you now it looks like somebody's taking the black from the front and just put them up against it. That's a six inch. Well, probably closer to eight at least. How pretty is that, hey? Well, that's what we came for. My first wild brown trout in this unbelievable pristine river. With Mr. Pierce Young. <laughs> Thank you very much. And on the dry fly as well. The fly that we tied last yeah, night. Oh, the dry fly we tied last night. We tied last night. And the more you still find the, find the Loch Levens every now and again, you'll find one that'll come in. They're much more browny, silvery, and the spots are darker with a kind of like a silver halo around them. But the German ones are really, really pretty from the, with the red spots on them, red fiery orange spots on them. Very, very lucky. Look at that. Thank you. Awesome. Now our wilderness, value for money, most anglers don't understand yet, as Jan explained to me. There you go sir, ready to go to battle again. Look at that. Now this is that little big footprint fly we tied. Amazing little thing, eh? When the fly is wet, what we do is we just put it in some, in some desiccant just to dry the fly out. Put the fly in with the leader on. Shake it up. Shake it out. And it's ready to go. I'm actually hoping that we'll catch it like a really small one. A nice little Bushman's River brown trout. Uh, so the German strain, we can see by the red dots, so it's not the original Scottish Loch Levin stock which is here. But such, such, such pretty fish. Beautiful fiery red spots, nothing prettier than these beautiful little fish. And off he goes. Oh, oh that's Oh, that's a caddis. Oh, very nice. Good find. That's a caddis larvae. Commonly known as a green rock worm. See, it's got the green, the green abdomen, black head. So we tie the flies with a black head and a green body. Let's see. What have I got here? Where is he? That and that. Okay, so what we're doing is, yeah, we just picked up a couple of rocks to see what's left in the in the food larder for the fish 
Um, the water is very cold though today, it's already 9 degrees, already single figures. So we weren't expecting to find very much, so very pleasantly surprised to find, well on this rock anyway, one small mayfly and a, and a caddis larvae, green rockworm. So you saw there the fly, the fly approximation with the black head and the green body. Um, and a small mayfly, mayfly imitation would be anything like a small, small black fly or a pheasant tail nymph. Yeah. Boy. Cool. That's the one without the red dot. No, no, it's all got red dots in it. See, check the red. Uh, wrong angle, what's the angle? Okay, yeah. Still got all the red dots in it. German. No, no, I haven't caught in 11 years, I've never caught a Loch 11 up here, so. That fly that we tied last night is flipping doing the business. So what you want to do when we, when we handle the fish, um, obviously the net is wet, but yeah, we want to keep our hands nice and wet so we don't damage the fish and we don't damage the, the protective slime layer that the fish has. Um, and yeah, keep them wet. We want to keep them wet and keep them alive and so they can play again for next time. in the middle of one of our very beautiful areas of South Africa, one of many, uh, but really pristine. We did about a kilometre now, right? Uh, we've done 2.4 feet. Two and a half kilometres per river up, and uh, Jan just told me we're not even halfway. But it's time for lunch. Started. You saw the fish there tend to tend to scuttle a little bit. All right, guys, we've kind of reached the end of our, our session today. This is what we had time for. We still need to head back, but what an awesome, awesome place to visit. So, if ever you're in the area, really a special place to visit, uh, for, especially for those purists with dry fly fishing, getting brown trout, wild brown trout in a river. Um, this is the Bushman's and Jan is still gonna do this last corner quickly. I'm gonna cut through and meet him there. And uh, yeah, let's see if he gets something. All right, guys, that, that's it for the day, but what a special experience and thank you very much for introducing me to this. Pleasure, pleasure, Andre, it's my favorite place, so yeah. New guests are always most welcome. They write books about this. Absolutely, they do. Yeah. yeah. So this was really a beautiful experience and I really want to thank Jan. And guys, if ever you want any advice for the fly fishing area here, Jan lives in Nottingham and he runs the Kingfisher store in uh, Peter Maritzburg and always open to give advice and tips and contacts or whatever you need to actually have this special experience. And he also guides the area. So if you need a guide in the area, you can just speak to you. Kingfisher Peter Maritzburg. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks very much, Andre. It was actually a really special day. Thank you very much for joining me.